in this artificial intelligence class we will see planning to move from 5th unit robotics that is how the robot will uh, move from source to destination by using motion planning problem or uh, path planning problem okay first uh, we will see the physical and configuration space of robot where the robot is fixed and uh, how it will use this particular space and the problems in configuration space so this is the physical space and this is configuration space right and the different methods to find the path path planning right from source to destination first one is cell decomposition method and the limitations of this method after that we will see the modified cost function and the another important method is skeletonization methods here three different algorithms are there first one is visibility graph uh, Voronoi diagrams and a probabilistic roadmap and today's class we will see all those things one by one planning to move in robotics which is deciding how to move the effectors of robot to do or to reach the destination okay for example initially the robot is here so this is the source and the robot needs to reach the destination this is the destination okay first initially it needs to find the path okay path and it should know how to move in this path okay so for this the sequence of actions are planned to achieve the goal what goals here the robot needs to reach the destination plus okay right here the motion planning and or the path planning is a computational problem to find the valid sequence okay first we need to find the path and from this path the robot have to move by doing a sequence of actions so what sequence of action the robot needs to perform to reach the destination right and the movement is actually in physical space that is inside a building for example okay for example we can take automatic vacuum cleaner so in the vacuum cleaner how the vacuum cleaner will move inside the building inside the building to clean the building okay so it should it should avoid walls and it should not fall down on the stairs okay sometimes steps may also be there it should not fall down on the staircase or steps and it should avoid the wall so these are the instructions we have to give as input okay so the motion planning algorithm would take descriptions of these tasks as input so these instructions would give as input to the robot and it produce the speed and turning commands where to turn okay if it reach the wall then it should turn left side or right side okay so those turning commands and speed will be given to the robot wheels so that the robot can move uh, from one place to another place inside the building right so there are two types of motions the first one is point to point motion and second one is compliant motion point to point means the robot itself will move from one place to another place okay this is source this is destination so the, the robot itself will move from one place to another place is called as point to point motion this is somewhat simple one because the robot will move inside the building or outside the building uh, and second one is compliant motion when come to compliant motion the robot move while contact to an obstacle okay that is the robot can carry an obstacle and then move or the robot can do the obstacle while moving okay so this is somewhat difficult when compared to point to point motion okay and for example the robot that screws the light bulb okay that is uh, the robot will fixing the light bulb or the robot will pushes the box across the table uh, for example you can see in this image uh, the robot is manufacturing the car okay by fixing all the screws and the car will move from one place to another place so all the robots will do some work because of this movement okay. it is important to find the suitable representation 
of a robot of a robot in which motion planning problem can be described and solved so uh, first we have to fix the configuration of robot okay and how it is represented and those are decided in the beginning itself so here two things are important first one is configuration space second one is path planning so configuration space means in which uh, how the robot is configured and in which place robot is going to fix right so the space of robot state defined by the location and the orientation and joint angles so based on the joint angle only the robot can move right so these things are very important and this is called as configuration space configuration space means the space where the robot is fixed and next one is path planning path planning means the problem to find the path from one to another that is initially the robot is like this after uh, the movement the robot will move in this direction in this direction this is called as movement and this is the path in which way the robot will move right uh, in the configuration space this is important in continuous environment so here the environment is continuous so configuration space is where the robot is fixed and path planning means how the movement will be taken place so these two things are important here there are two main approaches in motion planning problem first one is cell decomposition and second one is skeletonization so these two approaches will reduce the continuous path planning to discrete graph search problem okay so if it is continuous path planning problem this will be very much difficult but if we reduce to discrete graph uh, graph search problem then the complexity will be very much reduced okay and it is also easy if the motion is deterministic and the localization of robot is exact okay that is if it is in exact location or exact fixed movement then the motion planning problem will be very easy configuration space in robotic motion problem the configuration space is very important and it is otherwise called as c space right okay the configuration space means the space of robot states defined by so the robot state should be defined by the location orientation and joint angles okay so the space for defining all those things is called as configuration space right and it is a space of possible positions uh, the robot may attain possible position the robot may attain right for explaining this configuration space let us take one simple representation of a robot with uh, a single arm for example this is our robot the robot is having a uh, one arm okay robot with an arm so this is our example and the workspace is this particular diagram okay workspace representation of robot arm the workspace is a box with flat obstacle hanging from the ceiling okay so this is the box okay in this box uh, the flat obstacle is hanging in the wall okay so this is what the workspace so the robot is working in this space in this box where the robot is actually working is called as workspace when come to configuration space okay so this is uh, the diagram for explaining the configuration space for the same robot right uh, the white region see the white region is the space for configuration that are free of collisions okay the white region the free of collisions there is no collision in this white region right the dot in the diagram see the dot in the diagram okay corresponds to configuration of robot okay actually the robot is fixed in this space okay the robot is actually fixed on a table these are the table and 
this is left wall ok. The left side wall is this one and vertical obstacle is hanging that is here ok. And the free space are represented as the white space right. The robot arm has two joints and that move independently. For example, uh, this is one joint and this is another joint, right. So, this is called as elbow joint and this is called as gripper joint. So, when the arm moved from one direction to another direction, both the coordinates of two joint will get changed, ok. So, that the arm will move from one place to that is one direction to another direction, right. So, this will be happen in workspace representation that is workspace of robot. So, the workspace representation are well suited for collision checking right and next one is configuration space here it is represented the state by the configuration of robot joint ok. So, the configuration space is used to, to represent the state of robot how the state of robot will be computed by configuration of robot joint, how the robot is at present, what state the robot is at present that is computed by using the configuration space, right. So, the robot would then move its joint and constant velocity. So, for movement, suppose the hand will move from one place to another state, then it have to apply some constant velocity on that arm so that it will move from one location to another location until it reached the target location. The problems in configuration space. Normally, the task of your robot is expressed in workspace coordinate but not in the configuration space coordinate, ok. So, uh, it is important to transfer the coordinates of configuration space into workspace ok. So, that is configuration space coordinate should be transferred into workspace coordinate this process is called as kinematic. So, kinematic is very simple one ok. Kinematic means transforming the configuration space coordinate into workspace coordinate right. The inverse of this problem is called as inverse kinematic. Inverse kinematic means transforming workspace coordinate into configuration space coordinate, but this inverse kinematic is somewhat complicated one. And next let us see the free space and occupied space. See in the configuration space can be decomposed into two subspaces, first one is free space and second one is occupied space, ok. The white area are free space and all the uh, shaded regions are occupied space, occupied space ok. Um, that is the different shading of occupied space correspond to different objects in the robot workspace ok. So, this region is occupied by table and this region is occupied by left wall and this region is occupied by the vertical obstacle this one the vertical accept obstacle occupied this region right and the black region which is surrounding see the black region these are the black region is not it. So, surrounding entire free space which corresponds to configurations in which a robot collide by itself ok. So, if the arm extend exceed in this level then collision may occur if the arm exceed in this level then collision may occur that means it can touch the wall it should not touch the wall ok while working or while uh, taking some of the uh, object the robot arm should not touch the wall hence these regions are collision regions. The next one is cell decomposition method uh, this cell decomposition is used for path planning problem path planning problem means the robot will move from source place to destination place. So, it needs to identify the path from source to destination. Now, the cell decomposition means this entire space will be divided into finite number of cells 
okay by combining these cells we can easily find the path from source to destination so that the robot can use this path to move from one direction sorry one place to another place right and this one is called as cell and these regions have some important property that the path planning problem with single region so with the single region it is having some important property to solve by simple means by combining all the means we can get the path from source to destination okay and this path planning problem then become discrete graph search problem so in the graph we can easily search source to destination that is path from source to destination right so the simplest cell decomposition consists of regularly spaced grids see the grids are constructed like this okay in this diagram each square is represented as a single cell okay the cells are arranged in grid form right and the squared grid decomposition of space and a solution path is optimal for this grid size okay so here this is the starting place and from the starting place the robot arm have to move like this okay and finally it will reach the goal place that is the destination because this grid will be arranged only in the free space free space or white space okay so because in the free space only the robot can move and it is important to find the cost of shortest path from start to goal right and this particular one diagram shows the corresponding workspace root of the arm so the starting phase 2 the arm will be moved in this way okay so likewise it will reach the destination place so for this finding path from source to destination we can use a star algorithm right so what is the purpose of a star algorithm it is used to, to find the shortest path from source to destination okay this cell decomposition is simple to implement and next let us see the limitations of cell decomposition methods there are three important limitations here the first one is this cell decomposition is workable only for low dimensional configuration that is if the configuration is two dimension then it is easy to implement suppose if the dimensions are increased then the number of grid sets should also be increased hence the complexity will be increased so it is workable only for low dimensional uh, configuration space and second one suppose if we implement uh, that is if the space is divided into number of cells the cells will be mixed in white space and the occupied space then it is uh, very much difficult to count this particular cell for our configuration or for, for path finding okay for example this is uh, the free space suppose the grid is like this so we cannot use this particular grid for uh, finding the path right collision may occur and third one any path through state space will not be smooth okay so the uh, starting space may be here and destination may be here okay the path may be like this the path may be like this not the straight line right so these are three uh, very big limitations of cell decomposition methods the next one is modified cost function uh, so to overcome the problem of cell decomposition method we can move to modified cost function okay let us see this particular figure here the path from start to goal see this particular path this is very much close to the obstacle see these regions are very much close to the obstacle right for example 
this is the parking area of a car this is parking area in this parking area this is exactly the size of the car okay only one millimeter gap both sides if the size that is if the gap is only one millimeter then we cannot consider this parking area is sufficient for this car isn't it see for the same reason we would prefer solution path that are robust with respect to small motion error see if the error is very small then the entire system will get collapsed this problem can be solved by introducing potential field potential field means see for example the white region is called as uh, free space so in the free space we are going to find the path from starting to goal state so this is the starting and this is the path okay so here we introduce the potential field so this is the shading gray shading is called as potential field potential field and in the potential field the value grows with the distance to the closest obstacle so if it is closest here then the value will get increased skeletonization methods skeletonization is another important family of path planning algorithms and here this algorithm reduces the robot free space to one dimensional representation see if it is one dimensional representation the path planning is very easier isn't it so in the single dimension we can easily um, plan the path of a particular robot and this lower dimensional representation is called as skeleton skeleton of configuration space right so uh, the higher dimension will be reduced into lower dimensional space so that finding path will be very easy in skeletonization methods there are three different methods here first one is visibility graph second one is Voronoi diagrams and third one is probabilistic roadmap let us see all those things one by one visibility graph this is the first method of skeletonization here this graph is for configuration space so this is for configuration phase which consists of edges these edges will join all paths of vertices okay see these are the vertices and vertices are connected with the edges more number of edges so that we can easily identify more path from source to destination okay so the path is clearly visible see this is another path okay directly we can reach the goal okay so this is called as visibility graph the second method of skeletonization is Voronoi graph uh, here to do path planning the robot first changes its present configuration into point on the Voronoi graph okay so first it will identify the points by using Voronoi graph by straight line motion in configuration space so the point should be joined by using straight lines okay and second the robot follows the Voronoi graph until it reaches the point nearest to the target configuration see for example this is source and this is the target okay so from the source it will identify the nearest point to the target configuration from here it will identify nearest point okay likewise it finds the straight line motion in the configuration space to reach the target that is the destination hence the original path planning problem will be reduced to one dimensional hence more number of uh, one dimension curves will be intersect to each other to find the path see the disadvantage of Voronoi graph and when come to large dimensional configuration space it is very difficult to implement okay uh, because uh, they make unnecessarily large deviations when the configuration space is wide open okay so this is very difficult if the configuration space is higher dimensional 
The third method of skeletonization is probabilistic road map. This is alternative to Wernicke graph. Okay, this offers more possible routes and it can deal better with wide open spaces. So, this is the alternative to Wernicke graph, right. See here, uh, probabilistic road map diagram is given here. This is the source and this is the destination. The robot needs to move from source to destination, okay. So, this graph creates randomly generating large number of configurations. So, large number of configurations are created and discarding these to not fall into free spaces. That means, the configuration will create only in the free spaces. Okay, it will discard the other spaces, these spaces, right. Two nodes are joined by R. Okay, see this is one node, this is another node, these two nodes are joined by arc. It is easy to reach one node from another node, okay, because by using straight line we can easily join the nodes, right. So, this is always otherwise called as randomized graph in the free space. 